folks, welcome to the Pipnotic Symposium. Um, I just received an email from a gentleman named Paul, who's in our community. Paul's question was relative to the algo and the histogram and how that should be understood in relation to the distribution of liquidity. And we talk about these things all the time. These are really, really good questions. And essentially the question was, why does the algo work so well? And why should we buy when the histogram is low and selling when it is high? And so this is just a lesson that'll help explain why. I mean, if you look at if you look at this, we have we have the histogram that has moved higher. We have price that moved higher, and then it moved lower. We have the histogram here that was low, then price moved higher. I mean, what's going on? Why is this happening? And this is a really really important concept that you should understand. Essentially, you have the buy side of the market and you have the sell side of the market. The sell side of the market, they are the institutions that we interact with in order to fill our orders. So they make it possible for us to trade currencies or crypto or, or stocks or commodities, whatever. These people, they create markets, retail space speculates. What they do besides that is they are filling relatively big institutional orders on behalf of their customers via the interbank market. And this interbank market plays a huge role on how uh, retail traders are essentially being played. We think that, that the market is out against us, but it's not at all. It's simply just the way the market is operating. And so the bigger banks, they fill orders for each other. They don't have enough liquidity in-house to fill the orders on their books. They'll dip into the interbank market. And so when you see stuff like what you can see going on here, there's a very, very clear intention with what you can see just here. Okay, and I'm just going to draw this off in a in a green box. So we have a box, we have looks like that. I'm just going to mark off all the way over here. This is a macro supply, okay? We're on a smaller time frame, but this is macro supply. So there will probably be a candle like that, maybe another one like that. And there's probably going to be a wick, maybe on this one, who knows? And then the price leaves. It kind of sits around here a little bit, and it comes back up sideways and then it leaves okay so this is what we're seeing um, just on a on a much smaller time frame so we can dissect the anatomy of price what we can see here is we have liquidity here when I say liquidity I mean pending orders and these pending orders can be in, in many different forms they can be in uh, limit orders they can be in buy limits and sell limits and they can also be in stop orders and stop orders play a pretty significant a role in what we can see happening just here. The big banks, the banks that our broker or the other big banks interact with, they know where the retail space will typically have their orders placed. Okay, so if you have a price structure that looks like this, how you have price going up and down and up and then up, oops, that wasn't very pretty, and then down like that, they know that if price is here and a retail, retail trader is looking to sell, he's probably going to have his stop above it. Or if we have price here, we have a retail trader looking to buy, they're probably going to have their stops here. And so a lot of the liquidity available in here is in the hands of the retail space. And so if I'm a big bank and my customer, who's another big bank, contacts me and said, we have this order in our books that we can't fill in-house, so we're dipping into the interbank market. And I'm asking you, do you have the necessary liquidity to help us fill our order. And so this bank will say, we do, but we have it in the form of stops in the hands of our retail traders. And so what do you do? Do you, can you call the retail traders and say, can you please close out your orders? Cause we need the liquidity that all of you collectively have in your hands. No, you can't do that. This is, this is not possible for obvious reasons, but what they can do is they have a really good idea where people have their stops located here and here and above this high here and below this low here and below this low here. And so what they do know is that they can drive price to certain price levels relative to a price structure, the price structure that we're looking at just here. And by doing so, they can release the required liquidity into the market that they will then use to fill the order, okay? And so what you can see going on here, this is exactly what's happening, okay? So we have, let me go back a little bit so we can see inside this rectangle. Okay, so we have we have this this here. This is a this is a one hour chart. So small time traders they put their stops above and below uh, resistance and support. Okay, so just here, if someone's looking to sell, they're going to have their stop here. 
or they're gonna have it here. And if they're looking to buy, they're gonna have it here or maybe down here below this area here. Okay, and so the institutions, they know this and they need the liquidity that the retail uh, collectively have in their hands. And so what they have to do is they have to take on contrarian orders in order to um, hit our stops to release liquidity in the market, which they will in turn take for themselves. They know that there are tons of stops here cascaded all over here. So what they'll do is they'll buy. They will buy to drive price high, drive price above historical uh, areas of resistance. And this will hit stop orders, flushing liquidity into the market. Okay, on the retail side, they will say, wow, I just lost a trade. I want to get my money back. And so in turn, they're going to say, we have a breakout. Super. So what they'll do is they'll see maybe price rally, accumulate, and then rally. They'll see price rallying up like this, which will give them conviction that we have an area of demand. Price tested it once, and so it'll probably hold in the future. And so they put an order in to buy here, and their stop is just down here. Price rallies. It tests it. They're in the profit. They feel very confident. What happens? Well, you have to consider the intention of the big institution. They are looking to fill a short order. And so they want all the liquidity necessary to do this. And so they know that there are gonna be stops here. They know that there are gonna be stops over here. And so they have to drive price into price points in the market where they're gonna flush all of the liquidity so that they can use it for themselves. Okay, and so you have the retail space, this guy here, he's pretty, he's feeling pretty confident about himself. He gets stopped out and now he's angry and now price is going down. So when price goes down, he thinks I am going to sell. So maybe he does that, but he puts his stop order here. Okay, price goes down, it turns around and stops him out. And now price moves up into his stop. He's really angry and he's lost 2% of his account and he's thinking, I have to earn this back. And so now he's starting to speculate heavily in an attempt to win back his losses. So now he's revenge trading. So now he buys, he buys here. He has his stop here. The institution do, they move through to release the liquidity available there. So they've been stopped out of their trade again. Price is not going down. So now the liquidity is released and so this goes on and on and on. And the retail guy is tearing out his hair, okay? They think the market is out to get them, but that's not the case. The market is simply doing what it has to do to fill the more important orders on their books. And in the meantime, the retail guy is being led through an emotional roller coaster, okay? Price jumps up here, it tests it, he's in the green, he feels great, he feels sad, he feels great. He feels great again because he bought here. He feels sad he was stopped out. And so he's having this unbelievable mix of positive and negative emotion. But the amazing thing about a human being is that they are much better at remembering the positive emotion than they are the negative emotion. And we do this to protect ourselves. Okay, so all the times that the trader was stopped out, they're always trying to focus on the positive aspects of it. And so when they were in the green, then they'll revert back to the when they're in the trade and when the traders in profit and why they didn't do this or why they didn't do that, whatever. Okay, so price comes down. We're continuing to stop all of these trades out. Price has one last rush above these highs here. Should there be any traders that took a short position with their stops here? And this is when the trade starts to work. Now, the institutional order has been filled and you know this because price leaves this, this equilibrium. But the big bank still potentially has long orders that they required in order to flush out the necessary liquidity uh, from the retail side of the market to help them fill their short order. So what they'll do is, is they will drive price higher on a final attempt to square up those long positions that they needed over here to dump liquidity before the real trade begins and when price starts to move away here. This is telling us where this struggle, this power struggle, struggle is going on. You can see it happening here as well. You have this here. This is another micro area. Okay, we have an area of what appears to be supply. Price goes down and then it goes up and it stops them out. This is how it works because it must work. Okay, the market is not out to get us. This is price movement by design, not by, by chance. This is exactly what the sell side is doing to us. So price this final go price runs up here. We we revisit this window of opportunity. They spur up their longs, and then 
they maybe hit some stops here and some stops here along the way that flush in some additional liquidity that they uh, scoop up which helps them fill the remainder of their order and price moves down okay and this happens over and over and over again on every single time frame let's have a look on the five minute chart and see if we can see something that looks quite similar to this okay so let's have a look at this one here this is a really nice negative read let me zoom in a little and we'll scroll back so we're seeing this again we're seeing the histogram moving lower let's draw a box this is going to be our macro demand which you can't see on this time frame so you have the highs around here and then you have this going on here we tested it we almost tested it here here and here and here okay and the same thing is happening here as well prices moved lower what does that mean that means the big banks are buying 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 we are selling 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 so we're selling to the big banks who are buying from us and then the same thing happens here we have a period of equilibrium where we have a low price rejects it goes down again and so anyone who saw this and thought that the market was going to reverse and continue moving higher they're putting their stops below here okay in anticipation that price is going to move higher what is happening these big pushes lower are ensuring that the liquidity that is required to fill the sell side orders they are filled by flushing all of the liquidity in the form of stop orders into the market here it's all being released here the buy side they're buying it all up this in turn results in this happening here okay okay so price goes up price goes up again price we move up here price returns to this price point here okay so we're, we're rebalancing we're returning to the place where we had to uh, maybe drive price lower in order to, to shake out the retail space and we return to that price point we square up our short positions and then we begin to buy up the liquidity in order to drive price higher and what happens is is the retail guys jump on and they jump on typically late this is going on all over the place all day long and again we can't take this personally it's just the way that the market works okay i'm going to stop now but i um, hope this answers your question paul if not um, let me know and i'll have a, another go thanks